Hey everyone, Josh Ring here. I'm here to help you learn a little bit more about music theory and just, you know, life in general as a musician so that you can create better music, believe in yourself, and share your gifts with others. Today I have a little bit more of a practical thing I wanted to talk about, and that's reading music from a tablet. So whether you're performing, practicing, recording, you know, whatever the case may be, doing as much as you can from the tablet as a musician. Uh, so today I just wanted to give you an overview of my setup and as we go along, I'm going to do a video series of diving into some of the details of some of the features we're going to be talking about today. Uh, and just for hanging out with me today, I wanted to offer you a free gift. This is my Music Theory Survival Guide. So wherever you're at in your music journey, I think you'll find it helpful for you. Just go to joshring.com free and grab your free Music Theory Survival Guide. All right, before we dive in, I want to give you a little background about my experience with a tablet. I've been reading from uh, an iPad for the past 10 years. In 2013, I graduated from Olivet Nazarene University with a degree in music, and then they asked me to stick around for a year because they were going to transition everything to iPad in the School of Music. So for performing, for their ensembles, for lessons, you know, everything in the classroom to the stage, uh, they were using the iPad, and they asked me to stick around to help with that transition as somebody that was both a musician and comfortable with this technology. Uh, so I've been doing this for 10 years, and I haven't had a single problem. And actually, it's been so much easier to have the tablet. All of my music I've ever performed is on there. When I go to you know play for a dinner or a wedding or a funeral, whatever the case may be, all the music I've ever played is on there, and I can I can draw from that, and I don't have to bring giant stacks of books anymore to do things like that. This is actually the, the second iPad that I've had. Uh, the first one I've had was working great, but uh, Olivet hired me back uh, to be a professor, so they gave me this iPad to use for the time being, and it's been working great. So this is a 2019 iPad, 10 and a half inch screen, uh, and it's been, it's been great. I would first recommend that you buy some type of case for this. If you want to take it out of the case when you perform great, but you know, when you're traveling with it, when you're just practicing or rehearsing with it, I, I would really suggest have a case with this. Some of my students haven't taken uh, that advice and their screens have cracked within a year or two. And uh, it's such an expensive piece of equipment here, we want to take really good care of it. So please buy a case. Other things that I've been using is uh, I have a page turner. I've used this exact page turner since 2013, and it's been working really well. This is the air turn page total. This exact model isn't used anymore. If I were to buy a, a page turner right now, I would either get the page flip butterfly, you can get it for 90 bucks, or I would get the air turn duo 500, which was 110. So these are the two that I would suggest getting. You just want something that's gonna be quiet and reliable and sturdy so that it'll stand the test of time. Uh, another thing that I have gotten recently is this Apple Pencil. It's a bit of an investment, but it's, it's a true life changer to have one. So with it, when you're annotating, you can have it to mark up your scores really nice and clean. Personally, I put a little address label on it with my phone number. Uh, it's just, it's kind of expensive for a pencil and I don't want to lose it. And all sorts of musicians have them. So you want to make sure you get your Apple Pencil. Actually, I also put a address label on the back of my page turner as well, since another piece of valuable equipment I want to make sure I don't lose. The app that I use is Fourscore. Uh, it's $20, so it's maybe a little bit more expensive uh, for an app. But again, I've been using this for 10 years, so it's one of the best investments I've made. All right, diving into some of the best features that Fourscore offers, I want to just start with uh, one of the best ones, and that is the ability to create set lists. Uh, so set lists are a way to organize music based on uh, maybe a concert going up, so you can have your music in order. Here I have the Messiah set list, so we do the Messiah every year, so I have the pieces that I perform on in order. Another great part about set lists is that you can create folders. So I've created a folder for all the accompanying that I do, because I do a lot of accompanying. And so I have a, then a set list for each student that I accompany within my accompanying folder. And you can see I have annotations for all of them, which are just absolutely great to have. I can use different colors for things. I have uh, stamps for like my rests in red there. Uh, just a lot of great features between annotations and set lists. One of my personal favorites that not many people know about, so I want to bring it up down here in the kind of toolbox area is at the very bottom is settings. 
And in settings at the very top, the very first one is this auto lock. And, and people often turn that on by accident, but really you wanna keep that off because auto lock is the ability for the iPad to automatically darken its screen and lock itself. So if you keep that off, then no matter what you do, the, the iPad will stay lit up nice and bright for you. You don't have to remember to put it in performance mode. Performance mode is another great feature. If you double tap uh, down at the bottom is these two arrows, bottom left. If you tap on that, uh, the little menu bar at the top won't ever pop up. So all you can do is go forward and backwards as you're moving along. Uh, another way to do that is that if you go down to settings and you go to gestures, I have it set up for two finger single tap is that perform mode will turn on. So anytime I just tap the screen with two fingers, it'll instantly go into performance mode. Some other features, and I'll, again, I'll dive more in depth with them in future videos, but there is a metronome in the top right. And the great thing about the metronome is that if you set it for a certain song, if you go to a new song, the metronome will change to your original settings. So it'll remember the metronome setting for each individual score you have. Another great feature down at the bottom is the piano. So if you're maybe a vocalist working out some music, you have a piano right there to work from. Another great feature is the rearrange feature. So here in the menu, rearrange lets me move pages around. Say I have too many, I can delete them or they're sent to me in the wrong order. Or here with this particular score, this has a big giant repeat. So the first four pages go along and then it wants you to repeat all the way back to the beginning which is a, a lot of page turns to get through quickly. I like to copy those pages. So as I go along, I just have that red arrow to remind me actually go forward. I block out in uh, that red highlighter what I don't need. And then when I go back to the first setting, it's now crossed off. So I don't play that. I know to just keep moving along. So a really great way to not have to backtrack <laughs> four pages or something. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Again, today was just a breakdown of my actual setup. Uh, as we go along, I'll dive deep into more specific areas of Foursquare. So if you have questions, you know, let, let me know in the comments below what would you like to learn more about with Foursquare or just reading from a tablet in general or even just any iPad questions. Let me know. And don't forget, grab your free music theory survival guide at joshring.com free. Thanks. Have a great day.